<laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Beth Vantine. Uh, I teach uh, education classes now here at the college and I teach some of the math classes as well. Uh, when I first started here I was actually more on the math side and now I'm pretty much fully on the education side outside of a few math classes. Uh, so um, if you are interested in becoming a teacher, uh, I'm your person. And so keep me in mind, keep my face in mind, um, I'd love to help you out if that's something that is a passion of yours that you're thinking about pursuing. And speaking of passion, this is one of my passions, is talking about multiple intelligences and sharing that with my future teachers. Uh, and I even shared it with my math students. Um, I, I, and fun fact, um, prior to teaching here at Spoonwork College, I taught junior high and high school math. And uh, I... Uh, randomly went to a workshop uh, during like the first third, I think third or fourth year that I was teaching, stumbled upon this teacher workshop, and I have been fascinated and curious ever since. And so I'm hoping I can spark some of your curiosity about uh, multiple intelligences, kind of do a little bit of a shout out to the growth mindset too, because you have to have it before you can look at the multiple intelligences. And so I, I hope that I share with you some uh, studying strategies, especially as we are looking at our way from here on out. You're going to be having some exams, some projects to work on. Hopefully I share some studying strategies with you that will help you now. Uh, and then um, if you already kind of know like what strategies work for you, the other aspect is, is you can maybe, by looking at these, kind of get a glimpse as to why they work for you. Uh, and then uh, another aspect of this is if you ever have to help anyone else, um, whether it be a sibling, a child, a niece, nephew, um, or a peer, uh, it, this might give you some insight as to other ways to approach trying to explain some things. And as an instructor and teacher, um, I really take this to heart, especially teaching math. I feel like you have to be able to approach teaching in more ways than just one. And so uh, not everybody understands things the same exact way. And so that's um, the aspect that I have um, taken on with my students as well. And so uh, getting into this, um, Howard Gardner is the one who came up with the concept in the late 70s and uh, early 80s. <clears throat> and at first he identified seven different intelligences. Now he's up to 10 and he says there's probably more. Uh, so I'm going to focus on eight today for time's sake because I, I don't want to you know, get into like 3 o'clock this afternoon talking about all of them. So uh, for time's sake, I'm going to focus on the eight that I know rather well. And uh, his uh, claim is, or his, his concept is, is that uh, we are strong in more than just one of these intelligences. So as I go through this, you might find that, hey, I really I kind of identify with two or three of these. And that's normal. Uh, and and uh, these can also change as you go through life. It has for me personally. When I first took my, there's all sorts of um, surveys online that you can take. Some of them are short, some of them are very lengthy. Uh, and I have found that over time, of course as a math teacher, my logical mathematical intelligence was really high on the survey. And my linguistic or the verbal intelligence was lower, um, higher than what I anticipated though. And as I have gone back to school multiple times in my life, and now especially that I'm teaching education classes, I'm doing a lot of reading and trying to figure out how to break down reading content to help my students understand it, I have almost got a tie going on with my verbal, linguistic, and my logical mathematical as I have progressed through life. And so even if you've taken a survey like this in the past, as you go through life, you may find that it, has, that it changes. Um, and I will say that um, some have challenged his theory um, because his theory is challenging the notion of IQ as being a singular inherited way of judging your intelligence. And so um, I, um, I just really personally connected with this, especially when you're teaching sixth grade math. I really connected with this to try to help my students understand uh, some, of the, some topics that are difficult, like fractions, uh, for students. Uh, first, I've got to give kind of a shout out to the growth mindset and the power of yet. And so the growth mindset, uh, this is something I learned while I was curious about um, multiple intelligences. Uh, you'll notice that they're, the dates, uh, they're both born about the same year. I think there's three years difference. They also had studies going on in the seven, late 70s uh, and 80s. And Howard Gardner's 
theory, I didn't realize it at the time, is actually a great emulation of the growth mindset. And I don't ever recall them ever teaming up, these two, but I, they feel like they very much interact and kind of um, just, they go very nicely together. Uh, and one of my favorite things that Carol Dweck, who is the creator of this, says is she says the power of yet. There's two ways to think about a problem. Are you not smart enough to solve it? Or have you just not solved it yet? And just tacking on the word yet is a whole different mindset. And uh, that's, I would say, I really, really feel strongly towards that. I didn't realize just how much of a growth mindset I have now. Um, as, as I've taught over the years, um, I really try to encourage my students, if, if you miss a problem, it's okay. It doesn't mean you failed. You might, might very well have learned something really, really uh, detrimental to help you understanding the, the material. So if you miss a problem, don't look at it as the end of the world. Don't look at it as you suck at math. You just don't understand the math yet. And so I really encourage you to, if that's the one thing you get out of this presentation, you think about the growth mindset if you find yourself having a fixed mindset. And I have to say, when I was in high school, I did have some tendencies of a fixed mindset. I would beat myself up if I didn't understand a math problem. And what I found out is, I'm really stubborn. And if you can challenge that determination, I, I ended up becoming a math teacher. Like one day somebody said to me, well, you're not gonna understand that problem because you're a girl. And I went, really? I'm gonna prove you wrong. And I didn't realize I was gonna become a math teacher to go that far to prove them wrong, but I did. So anyway, um, the growth mindset, you look at uh, feedback as being constructive. Um, that's how you write better papers. That's how you get better at anything in life. And I just wanna um, kind of point out that studies actually show that the growth mindset is what successful people all have in common. Anywhere from Michael Jordan, he's missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. J.K. Rowling was turned down by 12 different publishers. You know, she's very successful now with the Harry Potter series. And then, I don't know if you recognize the group on the bottom, the Beatles, it's not the best picture, but the Beatles um, were actually um, told by a recording studio, we don't like your sound, and you have no future in show business. And then, of course, the Beatles um, made history. And so even if you listen to current performers like Lizzo and Taylor Swift, if you listen to them talk, you hear them talk about, right, surprise, I was going to throw that one out, aren't you? Um, you will hear them talk about how many failures they had before they got to where they're at. And we tend to focus on success. We don't necessarily focus on the journey that it takes to get there. It takes failure to get there. So um, that's one thing that you get out of this presentation, I hope, is that you look through things, uh, through life, um, through a growth mindset. Now to dive into the multiple intelligences, there's eight of them, so I'm gonna try to um, go through them as steady as I can. Uh, the first one, uh, and don't freak out on me, uh, you don't have to actually score yourself here. You can just imagine checklists here. Um, it, for the verbal, verbal linguistic side, uh, does anybody identify with, you like crosswords? Um, you tend to remember things exactly as they're said. Uh, you find it easy to explain things to others. Uh, you like journaling or you like to read. Is there anybody that kind of connects with that a little bit? I know there are. I've got some coworkers in here with me that are. Um, so here are some of your strengths. Obviously reading, writing, talking, storytelling, debating. So anytime you had a debate in class, if you were fired up, that's probably why. Uh, memorizing, uh, you learn best by saying, hearing, and seeing words. And so some study techniques. I'm gonna say highlighting, but I'm gonna say, be careful with your highlighting, be choosy. Um, I struggled with this, I highlighted everything at one point in my life because I had a really difficult time trying to pinpoint what the main points were. So write and outline the information, discuss the information with others. If you don't have someone else, talk out loud to yourself. Yes, people might think you're a little bit crazy, you're, in fact, just channeling in that linguistical, uh, linguistic verbal aspect of your, of your brain. Um, mnemonics, how many of you remember Roy G. Biv? The colors of the spectrum, um, the, uh, what about PEMDAS? Math? Okay, so those are things that you take, that pull, you pull that first letter off and you try to make a meaning, meaningful phrase. And if I can make it goofy, that's all the better. So, uh, the, uh, and if you're interested in certain careers, I've got some of those included too. 
You might want to look at journalism, uh, being a translator, a teacher, maybe a politician, um, and a marketing analyst. So those are, that's the linguistic verbal side. How many of you connected with that? Got a few of you that did. And you might find that, oh yeah, I checked a few of them. The thing is, is you can also, like, if you would like to get better at this, try doing some of the activities in here that are mentioned. Um, like I said, my linguistic side, this side ha is almost tied now with the mathematical side of my brain. The next one is the visual spatial. And so how, does anybody um, identify with charts? or maps that they see, like a diagram in their textbook. Um, you're very observant. Um, you're good at, I, does anybody play Tetris ever? I know, it's kind of old school. Um, but Tetris where you're manipulating the shapes to get them to fit uh, so you can um, uh, wipe out rows. What's, um, Candy Crush, would that be kind of considered where you've got to kind of manipulate things? Okay, I couldn't find a good for that, so Tetris is what I got. Um, you are good at mental imagery. Um, mental um, image manipulation, um, artistic skills, um, you have an active imagination, um, you're good at sports because you can see what the next play needs to be, the next strategy on the field or on the court. Um, now, I also um, score high in this and I will say I'm not the best map reader. I mean, I can read a map, but my navigation skills could use some improvement. So this is something I've, I've been working on. You're very detail oriented. Is there anybody that connects with the visual spatial? So um, if you do, like for me, um, when I look at um, a page, the words can get muddied for me. I have to figure out a way to get it down to like the basics, the bare bones of it. And so color coding, um, that highlighting, uh, flashcards is helpful. Um, if, when you're listening to words, if you have a mental picture, sketch it, even if it's a stick figure over into the margin. Uh, I've done that not even realizing why I was doing it. Um, watch videos on the topic. How many of you learn by watching a video more so than reading it out of the textbook? Okay, you may have some of that visual, spatial um, aspect to your personality. Um, concept maps. Has anybody ever done a concept map before? Okay, uh, I've got a, a picture here. This is from my Ed Site class. And I, the, I hadn't really gone into much of an explanation about it. So I can tell that she's already a very visual, um, uh, spatial learner. Um, and a concept map is very helpful to help you see the groupings of the topics and to have a, at a quick glance an order to it. So uh, different careers, of course, engineering, um, maybe artist, uh, surgeon, architect, and some various others. Uh, the musical side, how many of you like to listen to music? Okay, a lot of us do, all right. So with that, if you are a musical learner, your strengths um, are uh, your ability to uh, discern pitch, rhythm, and tone. You like to recognize and create um, and reflect on music, and you like to sing. Um, I, can't, I, I am actually a musical learner too, by a little bit. I learn best when I hear music in the background. I don't mean listening to music that you can build out the tune to, you've got to have something to settle in the background that you're not going to just, it's not going to distract you. Uh, studies show that classical music or instrumental music is some of the best music you can listen to to help your brain. Uh, putting information into beats, songs, or rhythms. Um, uh, I remember singing Y equals MX plus B with my eighth graders um, to the YMCA song. And we would actually physically act out Y equals MX plus B. Um, have you ever done that before? Where, where you put something to music, song? Uh, did it help? Yes. And so uh, you've got some different careers there that you can look at into. Um, anything from a uh, music teacher to a journalist um, to uh, a songwriter. <clears throat> so the next one is one that, of course, is a math teacher. Um, got another fellow math teacher in here, too. Tested really high, probably in the logical, mathematical side. Um, this is where you like to be organized. Even if you don't consider yourself a mathematical brain, if you like to organize things, you might be more so than what you consider yourself. Um, you keep a to-do list. Does anybody do that? Okay, there's a few that do, a few that don't, that's okay. Um, and this is why I like Howard Gardner's theories. Is it allows you to experience success in your strengths uh, based on your personality. 
And so some different strategies um, for me that worked well, like I said, looking at graphs and charts. Um, I can look at a bunch of words on the paper, but if I have a graph or a chart, that it really helps like drive the concept home. Um, highlighting patterns. Uh, those concept maps, again, are a wonderful thing. And you're going to see concept maps in actually several of these um, different uh, multiple intelligences. Um, the, and I can remember when I was little, I always asked why. And I now know is because I was just such, um, I was even strong then with that logical mathematical side. I drove my family insane by asking why all the time. Um, as far as something that you can do, you can take creative um, uh, breaks. Uh, after you get some work accomplished. Maybe you want to do a puzzle, maybe Tetris, maybe Candy Crush. Uh, some careers, um, anything from actuary to um, an auditor to a scientist, math teacher, um, etc. So we've got the naturalist, like to be outside. Anybody in here that likes to be outside? Okay, so how many of you um, have ever gone outside to study when it's nice? You, that's why it worked for you, because that is channeling that natural side of your, um, of your um, uh, brain. Um, if you can't be outside, work near a window, have a pet near, just simply petting your dog nearby, right? Um, as long as you don't get distracted. Um, trying to make connections to the natural world, in other words, what you know and what you appreciate, and take study breaks after you get something accomplished, go outside. And so there's a wide variety of careers there for the naturalist. The bodily kinesthetic. How many of you like to move around? How many of you learn by doing it instead of just watching it? Okay, so a lot of people tend to be a kinesthetic learner, and that is um, one that um, there are st strategies here that would help a lot of people. Uh, whenever you've heard someone say, take notes, that was actually to help the kinesthetic side of your brain. They weren't just saying take notes just to be a pain. They were asking you to really like interact with the material. You need to interact with the material in some way, whether it be movement, um, touching it, like as you read, maybe follow your finger across um, the line that you're reading. Um, act out a scenario if you can, if it's a history class or maybe it's an English um, uh, poem that you're trying to understand. Act it out. The more senses that you can involve, the better. Uh, and these, um, this type of learner does not do well to study for long lengths of time. So take some study breaks in there and try to come up with something that, that involves movement. Go for a walk, jog if that's your thing. Um, get up and move around. And so there's various careers there, anything from firefighter to paramedic to athlete. The last two are interpersonal and intrapersonal. And uh, I've got two minutes, I think, so I've got just enough time. Um, the interpersonal, I think of as the social butterfly. And that's how I remember. The ER kind of matches up with butterfly. So that means you like to learn by talking things over with others, or you like to work in groups. Is there anybody that likes to do that? Okay. Now, don't freak out if you also, when you're taking one of these surveys, you also tie for intrapersonal, which is the person that likes to work alone. Is there anybody that prefers to sit, like, let me have my time? And it might depend on the subject area, too. So um, if uh, I'm actually tied for these also, um, and I thought, oh my gosh, I think I have a problem. No, that's not the issue at all. It's just sometimes I work better by talking things over with others, but sometimes it's distracting and it's better for me to work alone. And so if you are interpersonal, there are some things that you can do. Um, of course, studying in groups is a natural thing to try. Um, teach others as you learn. Um, it kind of reminds me of that verbal uh, linguistic learner. Talking things over is helpful to you. Uh, dis uh, discussion boards, believe it or not, that is um, channeling it. If you've had an online class, especially, that is channeling in that interpersonal um, uh, multiple intelligence. Um, interview others when possible so that you can hear it like the real deal. Um, and again, taking some study breaks. Socialize. You know, um, uh, give yourself some time, like a reward for accomplishing something. <clears throat> the intrapersonal um, knows their self very well. They uh, re are very reflective, very disciplined, and in tune with their inner feelings. And what was surprising to me were the careers I would have tagged more for interpersonal. But if you know yourself well, 
you can apply that to others. And so you'll see a, a wide variety of careers that I was shocked to see such, such variety in. So anything from being a counselor to a psychologist to researcher, um, a manager, writer, um, the study techniques for you is to study in, in a quiet area and allow your yourself time to digest the material. Uh, and reflect on it. Brainstorm a project before you start it. Concept maps again and journaling um, as well. So uh, d uh, anytime you have some mental imagery, uh, try to make a note of it in the margin of your notes and take those study breaks as a reward. Do something that you enjoy. And so those are the eight different multiple intelligences that I chose to focus on. I'm hoping what this does is it intrigues you and sparks your curiosity to try to dive into this deeper. Um, and ultimately, you are, hopefully it helps you with your growth mindset, and that will help you be successful not only in school, it'll help you be successful in life, um, relationships, and anything else that you want to fill in the blank. And so thank you so much for your time today. I greatly appreciate you being here. <laughs> oh. The last time I practiced this, I was 22 minutes, and I was scared I was going to take too long. So, um, does anybody have any questions or anything? Okay, you said that these are the eight you focused on? Yes. I know, so I haven't dug into it recently, but I don't think there were eight when I learned it back then. Like, mm -hmm. you said those are the eight. How many have they identified right now? Up to ten. Uh, and uh, let's see, eight, the ninth one, ninth and tenth, uh, one is um, existential, like uh, where you, you pursue your own um, existence in the world. And then I, um, I can't remember the other one. I think it's more on a spiritual level as well. And so, um, and he said there's, Howard Gardner said that there's more than likely much more than just those ten. Those are just the ones that, oh, and I forgot to add in that he studied um, gifted and uh, students with uh, disabilities, um, as well as uh, brain damaged um, uh, patients in, in a hospital. Like, he had such a wide variety of people to focus on, um, and it's just, it, it was fascinating that to, to read through some of his research to see how he came about this theory. And like I said, there is some controversy over it, but... In my opinion, um, if you can, you can apply this to help you study now, uh, and to help you study smarter. Uh, how many of you learned a, or thought of a way after watching this that maybe you hadn't thought of studying before? Okay, and that was the goal of this. Um, and also, when you go to help someone else, try maybe they, they ha are a different learner than what you are. Try channeling a different aspect of it. And so I use that all the time as an instructor. Um, and I know, um, Shelly, with teaching math, you do too. Like if a, if a student doesn't understand something, you pick a different angle to try to help figure out what does connect and what does click. And I think that's what we all should do. Thank you for asking that. Yes? Um, uh, what I found to be really sound about this is a... Uh, as a person who liked, I like to, to as a person who likes to do a lot of everything, who likes to just try a lot of things, you a lot of times you get written off as somebody who's just like does things half-ass or a little bit of wishy-washy. I've always kind of viewed it as I just want to, you know, uh, life is too short and there's too many things in the world to do to just like be like, I want to go to school, I want to do this, I want to be this, you know, uh, just there's too many things in life to. Um, Experience. I don't know. Try to experience it all, and I to try like, out. To try out, and yeah. um, I didn't realize, you know, putting all these different categories, things that you know, like I fit into. I didn't realize I could put them into boxes like this, and I don't know, logically put it put it into words, I guess. And maybe channel them mm -hmm. to help you to your advantage. Well, and I can already tell. It sounds like you've got growth mindset. You're willing to take on challenges, and if you fail, so what? Move on to the next one. Did you start to say something? Well, I was going to say, and maybe that goes into the existential part yes. that you were talking about. That's where it is. So you might look that up and explore yes. that a little bit more. I'm a little bit scared by it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you know what? Get curious. That is the only way you're going to learn is to dive into it, like you do with other aspects of your life. Thank you. Yes. Did you say that 
these things probably rely more on nurture or nature when they break down to how they shape you as a person? Um, I'd say both. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's a combination of the two. Um, that's definitely an argument that um, has gone on throughout history. Um, Alex, in, in our education classes, sure. yeah. is it you know, is it the environment that influences the the individual? Um, I would say um, I uh, had some challenges growing up that were presented to me, um, and I chose to get stubborn, as I mentioned, and. That was just, that was my, that is the nature of my personality. And my environment actually kind of fought that a little bit. So um, it just, it depends on the individual too uh, uh, and their personality. But that is a great question and we need another day. <laughs> we need another presentation. Anybody else? Thank you so much. I